Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the 2020 MacBook Air. And in this video, I'll unbox it, I'll set it up, and then we'll run some benchmarks, take a general look around it, and see what it's got to offer. And so you'll see this is the packaging, this is the 13 inch MacBook Air. Let's go ahead and take the wrapper off it. Now you can get a base configuration of a 1.1 gigahertz dual core i3, or you can go all the way up to a core i7 quad core 1.2 gigahertz with 16 gigs of RAM and two terabytes of storage. This is the base in between model. That's $1,299 with a 1.1 gigahertz quad core i5. So let's flip it over. So you can take a look at the specs. This is a 13.3 inch led backlit display, 2560 by 1600 pixels, 1.1 gigahertz quad core that turbo boosts up to 3.5 gigahertz eight gigabytes of Ram and 512 gigabytes of PCIe based storage. It also has the Intel Iris plus graphics and two Thunderbolt three ports. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a closer look. So we'll remove it from the box here and it's got that normal suction that you get with an Apple box. So you can't remove it very quickly. And here is the MacBook air. Now, before we look at this, let's take a look at the accessories in the box. You don't get a whole lot for this amount of money. You do get some design by Apple and California literature. You've got your MacBook air, the typical quick start guide. You've got a little warranty card and some space gray stickers to match. It does come in silver as well. Now let's set that aside. You also get a USB-C to USB-C power adapter and the power adapter for this is a 30 watt power adapter. So this is stuck here a little bit, but it's a 30 watt power adapter and it allows you to charge your, your MacBook pro and you'll see 30 watt right there. So it's just USB-C, no Thunderbolt on that, but let's set this aside and take a closer look at the MacBook Air. And this is the MacBook Air. And like I said, it's space gray. You've got a little silver apple in the middle. And then on one side, you have two USB-C ports. On the back, it's just metal. On the other side, you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And that's it. On the bottom, you've just got four rubber feet and then the screws to open up the bottom. So let's go ahead and open it up. open it up here, remove the piece of paper that comes with it, and immediately it boots up. Now what's different about this is it has better speakers. We'll take a closer listen to those in a minute. It has better microphones and it has the new scissor keyboard that the MacBook Pro 16 inch gets. And so this keyboard has a lot more travel. It should have a lot more feedback. I'll take a closer look in a minute when I try typing on it, but let's go ahead and set up the OS. Now I'm at the main setup screen and the language I want is English. So I'll click next. And then I'm based in the United States and it auto selected that for me. So I'll click continue and then I'll select my Wi-Fi network and connect. And I don't want to transfer any information, but you could do this now or do it later. We'll click continue. And now I need to sign in with my Apple ID. Once I've signed in with my Apple ID, I'll click agree to the terms and conditions, and then I'll click agree again, or else you can't use it. Now here's my username and then I'll set up a password. Now I'll click continue on find my, and now we're at express setup. So I'll go, go ahead and click continue. And then I like to share crash and usage data with app developers. So I'll click continue and screen time. I don't really use, I'll just click continue and I'll set it up later. And I do want to use Siri. So I'll click continue. I'll set up Hey Siri later. And then do I want to share audio recordings or not? No, I don't. So I'll click continue and I do use iCloud. So I'll click continue on that. I do like to use that. And then do I want to use file vault disk encryption? This is really up to you. I like the idea of it, but it seems to cause issues sometimes too. So I know a lot of people that turn this off. Now I'm going to set up touch ID and that's something I really appreciate on the new Mac. So we'll go ahead and click continue. Then I'll place my finger on it and we'll just set it up quickly. Then we'll keep doing that, get the edges of my finger, and then we'll click continue. Then it's asking if I want to use Apple pay. I'll set this up later and we can set up light, dark, or auto. I like to use auto since the light mode and dark mode will change throughout the day. So we'll click continue. 
and then you've got true tone. Now when I'm editing video and photos, I turn off true tone because you don't really want it because it makes the screen warmer than the reality of what you're seeing. But for now I'll leave it on, on this Mac because this is more for documents and things for me. So now here's the home screen and you can see all of the different applications. I'll go into system preferences and I like to turn it on. So the dock moves a little bit. So let me set this up. I want it to magnify some. And so when I move my mouse cursor over it, the applications kind of magnify in a little bit. And then I like to get rid of a lot of these things. So let me do that. And then I'll come back in just a moment and we'll check benchmarks and things. And we'll check out the keyboard. Now everything is set up and I want to check out the keyboard because Apple has acknowledged that most people prefer scissor switches over the butterfly mechanism. Now the butterfly switches didn't really bother me that much, but now that I've had experience with the 16 inch MacBook pro, I really appreciate them. And I also really appreciate that there's no touch bar here because I really don't care for the touch bar. Now let me go into pages and I'll try typing on it. And so let's try. Hi, how are you today? That's usually what I try out. And there's a nice feedback with that. And I don't type like most people. And you'll see I can type normal, but I, I have my own style kind of that works pretty well. So that's really nice. We have the escape key. We've got touch ID now, of course, and the trackpad is supposedly 20% larger. Now, before we run any of the benchmarks and take a look at that, the keyboard is nice and everything, but let's see what the microphone and the speakers sound like within here, because this still has the 720p webcam, which is not so great, but let's see if we can record a little bit of a video here. So now you can see I have the FaceTime camera activated. Let's go ahead and hit record so you can hear the difference in audio between my studio mic here and what's coming through the FaceTime camera and three studio or three mic array on the MacBook Air. And so now you can hear the MacBook Air and I'm not so sure it's that great, but it's definitely something you could use when you needed to record in a room, you're in a pinch and maybe you need to record a podcast or something like that. And of course it's sufficient for things like FaceTime time, but this 720p webcam is not so great. So now let's take a look at some of the benchmarks. We'll go over to Geekbench 5. We'll run that first, then we'll run Cinebench. Let me make sure everything is closed out here. So we'll run a CPU test and let's see what it returns. And you can see for the CPU, we scored 951 for single core and 2,464 for multi-core. And this is the quad core processor. So you can see one processor, four cores, eight threads. So let's go ahead and see what we can get for compute as far as open CL or metal. Let's take a look at metal. For metal, we scored 8,380. So these are the Intel Iris plus graphics. So hopefully they're a little bit better. Now let's run OpenCL quick. For OpenCL, the MacBook Air scored 7,522. So let's go ahead and see what we can get with Cinebench. Now I'll run the CPU test and let's see what we get. Cinebench finished and it scored 912 points. Now this is not terribly fast, but this should do what most people need it to do. As far as word processing, you could even edit a 4k video on it. Now let's take a look at the actual disc speed test and see what we get with that. Now with disc speed test, let's go ahead and hit start and see what we get. Now this is the 512 gigabyte version and initially we're getting about 1500 or 1500 megabytes per second write speed and 1199 megabytes per second or 1317 megabytes per second read speed. So I'm just letting it run back and forth. So about 1500 write, 1300 read, which usually it's the other way around, but that's what we're getting. So it seems to be pretty good. It's not as fast as say an iMac pro or a Mac pro or MacBook pro, but it's plenty fast. Now, when I was running benchmarks, the fans spun up to full speed, but they never went above 50 decibels. So usually they stuck around 35 to 40. Now let's take a look at the speakers. Now here's one of my latest videos. Let me turn up the speakers so you can hear them. I'll turn them up all the way and we'll hit play. And over the past week, there's been some interesting news about iPhone 12, iOS 14, Apple TV more recently, and a few other.
So the sound is quite nice, and it seems like they should do a nice job when you're trying to listen to music or just watch a video on YouTube or the internet. Now, the battery in the MacBook Air is good for about 11 hours of wireless web surfing or 12 hours of Apple TV app movie playback, according to Apple. Now, that's if you're not doing anything else, and probably if your brightness is at about 50% or lower. Now, the actual battery size is 49.9 watt hours, and this is a really nice weight. It's not too heavy, and in fact, it's about 2.8 pounds. So it really should fit nicely in a bag. If you want to carry it around, it feels very well built and nice and solid. And of course, we still have Touch ID, which is nice if it needs to be unlocked quickly or you want to use Apple Pay. Now, I really think this is a great laptop for someone that wants to maybe go to college, write documents, maybe you want to use Pages, Keynote, Microsoft Word, and maybe occasionally edit a photo or edit a video with it. You can edit 4K video with these. Last year's MacBook Air worked just fine with this. It's not going to be as fast as a MacBook Pro or an iMac or something along those lines, but it will be plenty fast if you want to do some light editing and things like that. But let me know what you think of the MacBook Air. I'd love to hear if you want to see a review about this. I don't know if I'll do one or not, but let me know what you think in the comments below. And also, if you'd like to get your hands on maybe one of those wallpapers or my recent wallpaper from my last video, I'll link it in the description for you as well. If you haven't subscribed already, those please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.